There we are. Hello everyone. We're back once again. This is another episode with Golf Cart Garage with me. I'm Tim. We're going to talk about some golf cart questions and see if we can help some people out. We come here live every Tuesday and Thursday. If you are interested in this content, please like and subscribe. You can catch me every Tuesday and Thursday here live on Facebook and YouTube at 12 noon central time. And have your question ready. Um, see if I can help you. Also, if you would like to schedule an appointment, a phone call with me, you, you're welcome to because our golf cart garage offers gearheads on demand service where you can actually schedule an appointment to speak with me about, uh, about your golf cart related issue. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description. Eric Boucher already telling me good morning. Good morning to you, Eric. I'm glad you're here, man. I appreciate all the people that come to the live chat and participate. Uh, it, it really helps things. Let's see. Let me check Facebook and see what anybody's over there. Oh, it looks like we're good over there. This is episode 103, believe it or not. This is the 103rd episode. There's the social media links. If you uh, would like to follow us on any other platform besides Facebook and YouTube, you can. You can follow us on Twitter, follow us on uh, anywhere you would like. So I'm running those links now. Mason, what's up, Mason? From Minnesota, 38 and rain. Temps falling and changing to snow this afternoon. We are, so believe it or not, we have got some nights coming up in the next few days that are going to be below freezing, like 27, 28 at nighttime. So it's it's crazy. I mean, March is a uh, March is a crazy month. It's it's, you never know what it's going to do here in March. You, know, it could, you could have snow one day and you could have sunshine the next, you know, the next weekend. I mean, sunshine and, and warm. It's kind of crazy. Let's see. We're going to get started with the regular questions. And we'll see what we get into today. Hopefully we'll get into something interesting. Number one. I have a 2015 TXT with a Kawasaki engine. Had to feather throttle so it wouldn't just take off and snap your neck back. Bought a new carb and pretty much does the same thing. Don't think it's the clutch because if I choke it a little, it takes off right away. Carb was bought off eBay. Is that more than likely the problem? Hmm. I would have, I would have lots of questions to, to, to try to, to be accurate or to try to help you out. I would have lots of questions. I would want to know why was the original carb changed on a 2015? I'd want to know that, uh, it, cause it could be the, the new carb off of eBay could be in a different spot. Throttle linkage wise could be, you could be a, the butterfly valve could be opening up a little bit more or something on, on the one off eBay. So you may have to compensate for that by adjusting the throttle cable. Uh, I would, I, and I don't know why you wanted to rule out the clutch. I would want to see the clutch. I'd want you to crank it in neutral and watch those clutches and see if that's where you're getting your initial jerk from. I know I always say that, but that's, I always like to watch the clutches. William Rizzo, what's up, William, from Marco Island. What's going on, man? Thanks for being here. I got a TS in the chat on YouTube. It says, hey, Tim, I'm new to the cart world, but am a low voltage tech. So rewiring this project was pretty easy. But with an RXV, there's got to be a way to bench test a motor brake. I would say that you're probably correct. There probably is a way to bench test a motor brake. Uh, you would, you would need to have it off and on, on the bench and you're going to have to, you know, come into it, like you said, come into the plug with, with a, some kind of way to, to put voltage to it, to, to see if everything is working correctly. I do not know. I mean, this, I don't say that very often that I don't know how to do something. I don't like to say that, but I do not know how to do bench test a motor brake on an RXV. But you're right. There is probably a way, and I bet if you Google that, you might you might end up on it. Probably in one of the golf cart forums. I used the golf cart forums for years. Uh, I think I've mentioned them before. 
Cartaholics.com. Cartaholics.com is one of the ones I've used for years. Very good for them. There are a lot of good people on there, a lot of knowledgeable people. Buggy'sGoneWild.com, another forum. I would bet you could find the answer to your question there if you haven't looked already. Let's see. Now we are on to. If, let me let me t ask this: Who does, does anybody remember last time we were here when somebody asked me about bench testing a shunt wound motor, and I was looking for my piece of paper and I couldn't find it. Well, I found, it was it was right where I was looking. I mean, it was a coincidence that someone had asked that question because the answer was sitting right on my desk. I don't know why I couldn't find it last time we were here, but I found it. I just can't remember who it was. I think they were on Facebook when they asked me that question. If somebody remembers that, please. Uh, put, it, put it in there because I'll answer their question now that I found my paper. Number two, speed controller. I have a 2016 club car and after I ride it for a while it goes into limp mode. I removed the speed sensor and the rotating magnet is cracked. Will this cause me a problem? Yes, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely going to be your problem of why it's going into limp mode. I mean I've seen that before. Yeah, so you're going to have to replace that because basically all the speed sensor is is a magnet. So yeah, if your magnet's cracked, then your speed sensor is busted. Let's see. We're good there. Number three is where we're at on regular questions. Would replacing the speed sensor on my 2019 Yamaha Drive 2 electric golf cart give a little added speed? We are not looking at attaining 25 plus, but this came off a golf course, so it's running at about 13. The motor is a 3.5. Any information would be appreciated. In that particular golf cart, in that particular electrical system, uh, they make, I'm aware that there are some speed sensors for sale out there that claim that they're hopped up speed sensors. I've heard good and bad things about them. Uh, I've heard that they didn't make a difference. I've heard they only made one mile an hour difference. I've heard that they didn't work at all. I've heard all over the board. So I'm not really sure about uh, that being a good option for you. In your electrical system, if you replace your controller, it, it was going to speed your car up a little bit. If you replace it with a nice Alltrax or a nice Navitas controller, uh, your car would definitely be a little bit faster because it's locked down at 13 right now because of programming. Let's see. Number four, my 2019 battery powered Yamaha golf cart tends to skip or hesitate when the throttle is pushed full on or as the accelerator pedal is pushed. But if I soft push our throttle fully or just below where the hesitation starts, the cart doesn't skip. Throttle cable adjustments, question mark. No, you said this is battery powered, so there's no throttle cable adjustments. The Yamaha uses a throttle position sensor. It sounds like to me that that may be where your, your problem is emanating from. It's basically the device that sends the signal to the controller. And if you're hitting it real hard, or I'm, I'm assuming that your batteries are fine. Because the, let me tell you what would happen if you had a weak battery. When you punched it real hard, if you punched your car real hard and you had a weak battery that was dropping out, once it dropped out, your car would hesitate for a second and then it may pick back up and, and act normal. So if I'm assuming your batteries are fine. If it's either one of your batteries dropping out or a throttle position sensor is what I would say. Jen Slinger, what's up, man? How you doing? Glad you're here and you too. Both of those forms you mentioned are an absolute treasure trove of knowledge. And oh, hey, Tim, good morning from Sin City. Good morning, sir. Glad you stopped by. I talked, I talked to another person, the, one of the NV Nature Girl. She's from the same area you are. And they have some kind of a, her father-in-law or something has a motorcycle, dirt bike rental business where they rent, they will rent you dirt bikes. And he invited me to come to to Vegas and, and uh, he said he'd hook me up with a motorcycle ride tour like through the desert and stuff. Sounds pretty cool. So now I got two invites to, to Vegas and you're going to, you're going to get me a, a, you're going to give me some beer, I believe. And then they're going to give me a dirt bike rides. I mean, I can't beat that. Let's see. Number five.
Let's see, what's the best way to tighten the starter cranking belt? Every time I tighten it, it lengthens back. That, that's the title of this episode, is the tightening the starter belt. It, it can be done by one person. It can be done. I, depending on which one it is, I'll tell you which one of the, that I found was the most difficult is that, that very common, very good motor, that Kawasaki FE290 in a club car, the gas FE290. That one's kind of difficult to get to because the body's in the way a little bit to get to the bolts. You end up scraping your hands on the fiberglass body and it's a little difficult. I ended up having to come up with a contraption that involved a couple of pieces of one by four wood and a crowbar in order to do a small crowbar in order to do it myself. Now, the best way to do it is with two people. You've got to have some, you need somebody to hold tension on the, the, uh, on the starter generator. And when you, when you've got the bolts loose, they need to hold tension on it. And then you need to get the belt in the right tension. You know, you don't want to go too much, but it's, they, you need to make them tight. They, they, they tend to run pretty tight or they'll start slipping then. So you can tighten the bolts up while they hold pressure on it. That's the best way to do it is to have two people. Let's see, Jim Slinger says, let's incorporate that into the beer visit. Yeah, that's for sure. Just make sure you have the beer after the motorcycle ride, Eric said. Yeah, that's true. Hey, I, I, do, I do not drink beer and ride motorcycles. You can ask my wife, I do not do that. Uh, I don't, I'm not ready to leave this planet, so, and I don't wanna go down. So anyway, I, I'm pretty good about that. Pretty good about that. Eric, uh, Jen says to Eric, solid advice, my man. I sometimes even follow. <laughs> Let's see. Mark Fulson, watching from Dayton, Dayton, Texas. Enjoy the show. Obligatory swag. Appreciate you being here, Mark. Appreciate you being here, man. Glad to have you. Let me see. Where are we at here? That was number five about the starter generator belt. Yeah. Well, he says it every time you tighten it, it lengthens back. See that? That's why I'm saying you might need a second person so you can see what's moving. Because if you don't have a second person and you're you tighten it up, you might not be able to see when you let go of the wrenches. You might not be able to see if there's any movement if it is actually lengthening back or is it started. I'm assuming that there's nothing visually wrong with the belt itself. You know, normally a belt will not stretch uh, unless they're damaged in some kind of way. And what I mean by damage is cracked. You know, they'll develop cracks on the inside. And you can, and when you can, you can push them together with your hands like that, and you'll you'll see all these little cracks. Let's see, number six. Carp unlocks, brake then locks it again. It won't move. Car, there's a 2012 EasyGo RXV. What could be the problem? Well, it sounds like that we're talking about uh, the same thing TS in the chat over here was talking about. It sounds like we could be talking about electric motor brake there, electric motor brake deal. We're gonna find out, this is what I'm gonna do. Since TS brought that question up, I am going to look that up. I'm going to look that up and have a, see what I can come up with for bench test for an electric motor brake, because that is a fairly common question. So it would be nice for me to have, uh, have that on a note card or something, just like I do about the shunt motor testing, a bench testing a shunt wound motor, because it's different than a, than a, a series wound motor. So I'm going to do some research on the bench test for a, a motor brake, since that's the second time that's come up today. Number seven. This is from Brent. I let my neighbor borrow my charger about five days because his cart wouldn't charge. Now my golf cart is not taking the charge. It has a blinking green light indicating less than 20% charged. Is it possible his cart blew my charger? The batteries are about three years old have good water, etc. I've checked all the cables are good. I just need to know if there's another option to get it start charging again. Well, it says less than 20% charge. So that you may not have enough voltage in your car in order to, for your charger to come on. Your charger has to sense a certain amount of voltage. Now, 
should that have happened after leaving your house for only five days? You only went five days without your charger? I don't think so. I don't think that should have happened that quickly. Now, it would have eventually happened over time. Anytime you leave a golf cart just sitting there, an electric golf cart, the batteries are going to discharge. They're going to have a slight discharge rate where they're going to be getting lower and lower week by week. But not in five days? That seems a little bit excessive. So let's get back to your question about could he have damaged your charger with his cart? Well, my that my first answer, my, my first thing that would pop into my head is I, I would like to know what condition his batteries were in his in his cart that he used your charger for. Why did he need your charger to charge his cart? Because if his cart was really, really dead, then it's definitely going to put more of a strain on your charger than normal. It's going to put more of a strain on it if his batteries were really dead. Now, what, depending on what kind of charger we're talking about, we're talking about an old-timey, not old-timey, but an older transformer-type charger or solid-state. I would have questions like that, too. If it's an older transformer-type charger, then definitely put a fan on it. And, you know, if you're trying to charge a dead golf cart, put a fan on it. If it's a solid-state, it shouldn't really matter that much. Uh, so the answer to your question is yes and no, actually. It's, it is possible. You know, depending on how bad off his battery pack is, did it? Did he? Did he say that it worked fine on his cart? Did it complete the charge cycle? But uh, I would be curious of why yours is down so low in just five days, too. Let me check over here real quick. That's cool. Number eight. I have a question about my 2003 EasyGo TXT gas. It spits and sputters when taking off. After 20 to 30 seconds, it cleans itself out and takes off. Not sure what it can be. Just put a new carburetor on it. Was doing the same thing with the old carb. In a gas car, anytime spits and sputters and especially if it cleans itself out i go back to some similar symptoms that happens to me it didn't ha hadn't happened too many times with me on a golf cart but that similar symptoms have happened to me on a jet ski uh it spit and sputter and then kind of clean itself out if i ran it real hard and turned out to be fart plugs which is very easy to do i mean that's that's usually the first thing that i that i go for Anytime I've got some kind of spitting, sputtering, or missing issue, I go to the spark plugs because it's one of the easiest things and one of the cheapest things to do. In fact, that may be, I may change the tip this week and I may change it to the spark plug tip. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. We'll see if, if, if Kurt reminds me about the tip in time before I get out of here, then uh, I, may, I may change the tip because anybody with a gas golf cart, they need to have some spare spark plugs that they know are good on hand because that should be some of the first things that you do if you end up with problems with it running. You should do that first. Let's see. Number nine. I have an EasyGo TXT PDS. Solenoid clicks, but the cart will not run. Also, my charger is good, but won't charge my cart. What could be the issue? Well, this is one of those. This is one of those times where I would definitely advise to take this in the right order, and don't worry about why your car won't run first. Let's worry about why you're not getting a, why your golf cart's not charging. That would be the correct order in my mind. We got to get that charging situation figured out because, like I've said before, I always like to eliminate the batteries first. Well, if your charger's not working, then you could have a battery issue too. So we need to figure that out. So in order to figure that out, the first thing would be we would need to get some voltage readings on the batteries. Make sure your battery pack has enough voltage for your charger to turn on. All right. Once we've verified that. It would be nice to put your golf, your charger on another golf cart and see if it works on another golf cart. Then we know it's something to do with yours. That would be the order that I would take it in, and then we'll see if your cart runs after that, and then we'll go from there. Uh, from if let's just assume that your batteries are fine, 
Okay, let's assume that that's not the issue, that your charger is broke. Well, if your charger is a transformer type charger, it could be repaired. You know, it could be something wrong with it. It could be a circuit board. You might need to get a circuit board. That's why I want you to test that on another car so we can eliminate that. But there's lots of different ways that we could attack it. I just would want to do it in the right order. Kurt <laughs> says, yep, I'm waiting. Your tips are really what we all waiting for. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's cool. Let's see. Number 10. This is going to be the last scheduled question today. And we're going to be hitting it right on time. I ran a little long last time, but I try to do a 30 minute show or a 30 minute episode. And it looks like we're going to hit it just right today. Depending. Let's see. My cart has headlights and tail lights but no directionals or brake lights how do i add front directionals add convert rear marker lights to brake lights and directional lights well you you may not even you may not be able to do that with your current system your your current system may not allow for that so the easiest way, since you only have headlights and taillights, the easiest way is just replace the whole system with one that has all that stuff in a new wiring harness that, that has all the plugs and everything, and then it will just plug and play, and you'll have blinkers, and you'll have everything that you want. That would be the easiest way to do it. Greg Elliott, I'm glad you're here, Greg. Uh, Tim, I was just wondering if you received text and images that sent you. Yes, I did. I was waiting for you to come in. I didn't know if you were here. Uh, Greg asked a question uh, last week or our last uh, episode, he asked a question about uh, Yamaha G29, uh, about how to get down to the frame. How do you remove the, the battery rack area? And, the, and I didn't know because I've never done it before. Well, he set images and pictures and explained how you do it. So I was, I was gonna share that uh, with this episode, Greg. On a G29, if you need to get all the way down to the frame, apparently the, the floor mat, uh, under the floor mat, the floor mat area under the floor mat and the battery rack area is all one big piece of composite plastic or something. And you need to lift that off of the frame. Well, you can't do it according to Greg, what he found out. You can't lift it off of the frame to get to the frame without removing the brake pedal. You got to remove the brake pedal. Greg, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that, is that, is that what you discovered? Is that, is that how it works? And by the way, thank you for your service, Greg. I wanted to tell you that. Gene Hansen says hello. What's hello, Gene? What's up? Craig. Yeah, where you been, Craig? Says sorry I'm late. You're supposed to be here on time every week. This is a this is a well old machine and you're you're part of it. So you gotta be here on time every week. I'm gonna have to dock your pay. Let me see here. Uh, Greg Elliott says you are correct and thank you. God bless. Yes, I did. I appreciate you sending me those and telling me that that might come in handy for someone else who wants to get down to the frame of a G29. Uh, nice Mustang too, by the way. What's up, Gene Hanson? Let's see here. Let me run. I'll run those social media links again. If you want to follow us on any of these other platforms, there is the links to the social media. We are everywhere. All right. Now, got a new coupon. You ready? Bam. There it is. Get 5% off. Parts you order at golfcartgarage.com if you use coupon code TIM9 at checkout. This code will expire on April 17th, 2023. Get 5% off. Let's see. Craig says, I have a gnarly grinding sound coming from where the pinion meets the gearbox. 
Can that be a bearing or would it be a gear tooth broken? Well, I can tell you this, anytime someone describes a grinding sound, like a metal to metal grinding sound, in a, if we're talking about, we're talking about an electric golf cart, if we're talking about an electric golf cart, it's usually the motor bearing. You'd be amazed at how much noise the motor bearing, when the motor bearing goes out, uh, that it will actually, that it will make, how much noise it will make when you, when you mess when a motor bearing. What you do, you, you take your motor off and take your armature out and get to the bearing and then you can just run the bearing in your hand and you'll feel it, it feels like sand and you'll think there's no way that that's making that much noise but just that little sand feel, feels like it has sand in it, that's enough to cause a big racket. Don't kick me off the payroll, Craig says. I'm not gonna kick you off, man. <laughs> okay, we are ready for the tip, Kurt aren't we? I tell you what, I'll give two tips. Here's my original tip. My original tip has something to do with the question that, that was earlier about uh, the person that had asked he loaned his, that he loaned his charger to his neighbor. All right, And he was gone for five days and now his cart won't charge and he's worried it, how, did his neighbor blow up his charger. Well, here's the tip. If you're gonna loan your charger to your neighbor, might it might benefit you to be aware what he's doing with it and why he's doing your charger and his battery condition be aware of his battery condition if his batteries are fine or like if his charger broke just for some reason then that's no big deal but if he's has a really dead golf cart he's trying to revive he is going to put more strain on your charger than normal now should it break it no but in this case it, it, it very well may have that was my original tip uh, to be careful when you loan your charger to your neighbor. That, that was my original tip. Now, the new tip that I talked about is going to be all gas cart owners. Uh, all gas cart owners should have an extra set of spark plugs somewhere that they know are good. They don't have to be on your car with you. They need to be in your garage, in your toolbox, or something somewhere. Uh, a lot of golf carts are single cylinder, so it's just one plug. Some easy goes are two twin cylinders, so it would be two plugs. It would always be a good idea to have an extra set of spark plugs somewhere because that's, not, that's going to be some of the first thing you should do. All right. All right, Kurt, I did the tip. I did the coupon code and I even did the second tip. This was episode 103. I appreciate everybody coming. Uh, y'all make my, this part of my job, y'all make it interesting. It gives me something to do and I appreciate it very much. If you like this content, please subscribe, like and subscribe and, and participate in the chat like you've been doing. That's awesome. I'm doing what I can on the swag. It's going to happen. All right. Thumbs up to you, Kurt. Appreciate everybody coming. Thanks again, Greg, for uh, sending me those photos and everything. I will do that research on the bench test on the motor brake, and we'll talk about that next time. I'll see what I find out. Garage is now closed. I'll see everybody next time.